Hi there. Welcome to Bourbon Turntable. We are the show that blends the love of music with the love of whiskey. With me tonight, as always, is my very good friend, Drew Crawley. Drew, Hi. how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm very good. good. Uh, today was a full day. Uh, it's a Sunday as we're recording this, and I scheduled a lot of things. I got to see our friend Lorenzo. Um, I awesome. got uh, something called a lymphatic massage. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, uh, it's <laughs> it's a whole thing went to a sauna and got all of my lymph nodes rolled out uh went to kroger and then i've been sitting on the couch since then uh, i'm in much more pain now than i was when i woke up yeah but otherwise it's great I, I i don't have any complaints it was just an interesting experience did you have this massage at a kroger and if so which one <laughs> no 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 uh this is at a, a spa in saint matthews okay uh, separate experiences but yeah no complaints today been watching a little tv with kate hanging out with the dog just chilling how about you how are you i'm doing all right doing all right uh uh actually took a, a little unintentional nap today so nice it's not a bad thing on a uh, cool and rainy uh sunday afternoon so absolutely but all good stuff. Good stuff. Good. So, so tonight we're going to be talking about uh, one hit wonders and mm -hmm. single barrels, some of which are one hit wonders. Um, so, you so be thinking about what your favorite single barrels have been or a recent one that you may have uh, happened upon. Um, and let's think about your favorite one hit wonders. And if you don't know what a one hit wonder is, we will, uh, you'll, you'll learn very quickly by the examples that, that we throw out there. But before we get into all of that, we want to tell you about the Bar Cart Co-op. Bar Cart Co-op is a collection of friends who produce content for the whiskey enthusiast. Talk about enthusiasts. That's what they are over at Distiller Stock. Alan Bishop, Christy Atkinson, uh, they book some of the best distillers in the country and all around the world to talk about everything and anything when it comes to distillation. It's a really interesting show. If you want to geek out on uh, all things whiskey, Alan also does a show called one piece at a time distilling Institute. If you are a distiller or just someone who is interested in uh, the distilling process, you can email uh, Alan um, a question. And Alan will record a YouTube video response to that question. And he'll post it out where everybody can see it. So you're helping him produce content for his show. And learning a lot in the process. Alan also does a show called If You Have Ghosts, Do You Have Everything? This show touches on uh, the paranormal, the supernatural, um, all kinds of very unique topics. He He's had a couple of shows with uh, Andy Kasperzak, uh, who is uh, Joe Lee's husband, uh, where they've talked ufos and and that is some really interesting stuff uh so check that out uh those shows are released over on spotify uh he'll kind of go through and and release several for a few weeks and then take a break and then come back in and, and release some more so check those out uh my whiskey den with pat and mike and mitch every monday night nine o'clock eastern eight o'clock central my whiskey den is where craft whiskey is king they have some wonderful guests they do some great tastings and it's just a lot of fun to, to hang out and hang out in the chat and uh, watch the show. Good stuff. Really good stuff. The newest member of Barkart Co-op, and we'll be talking a little bit more about this uh, later in the show, is David Levine and Whiskey in My Wedding Ring. Uh, Whiskey in My Wedding Ring, he's got a podcast and a blog. Uh, he'll interview distillers. He'll do reviews of, of uh, whiskeys. Uh, and Dave is a very good writer, very thoughtful guy, and uh, underrated funny uh, in, in what he does. And then lastly, we want to tell you about our show. 
Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that bell notification to find out when new episodes are coming out, which do, do come out every single Wednesday on all of the services, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, maybe Amazon, definitely YouTube. And always, always hit that like button, but hit it an odd number of times. So then that way it stays as a like. Thanks, Mike. I always appreciate your contribution to the show. Um, and truly appreciate you and your friendship. You're a great guy. So Drew, let's start talking about uh, single barrels first. And yeah, know, absolutely. You know, you've got one picked out. Well, first of all, you, you've been in the industry some, uh, both on the retail side and on the uh, distillery side. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about single barrels and what makes them special. Sure. So single barrel, for those that may not be familiar, is exactly what it sounds like. It is one individual barrel, typically a 53 gallon, uh, if you're in the state of Kentucky, uh, that is something totally unique. So if you see a small batch product or just anything else on the shelf, chances are it's a blend of at least two or more barrels, uh, something that they compile to make a specific flavor profile. Single barrel is just one at a time. And so what makes it special is that it cannot ever be duplicated uh, or replicated. It's a unique flavor profile. Uh, sometimes, you know, in our experience, I know, Kevin, you've had this as well. You can go in and see a barrel, uh, two barrels side by side that have mm -hmm. the exact same mash bill, the exact same distillation date, in the exact same position in a warehouse, and you open them up or drill into them, and they're wildly different flavor profiles. Yep. That's the beauty and the magic of bourbon as a whole. But a single barrel is truly a one hit wonder in the sense that it cannot be replicated uh, or duplicated so on and so forth so the draw behind this is when you get the opportunity as a retailer or a restaurant or a um you know a bar or something like that mm -hmm. you have something that is uniquely yours so uh those of us that kind of chase these things we're looking mm -hmm. for something unique sometimes it's an on profile uh expression in an elevated fashion sometimes it's wildly off profile and that's sometimes even more fun so that's kind of the overview anything else you'd add on that before i talk about what i've got picked out for tonight yeah I, we'll be airing this episode uh, during the month of december and a lot of people ask what's a good mm. uh, gift for for a bourbon lover in their in their life um well, actually, the question is, you know where I can get pappies? And no, I don't. And what about Wellers? No, I don't know that either. But if you're looking for something that is truly special and unique, going the single barrel route is a great mm -hmm. idea for, for all the reasons you just said, Drew. It is one of a kind. There will never be anything made it, made like it before ever again. And it's it's something uh, truly special. So those make fantastic gifts. So find your your favorite uh, liquor store. Sometimes you can get them through restaurants, but uh, see what they've got uh, uh, in terms of uh, single barrels. And and those those always make really good gifts. Absolutely. Yep. That's a great point. Uh, if you're looking for the rarest of the rare, don't even worry about you know. Weller Antique Collection or, or Buffalo Trace Antique Collection or Pappy, go find the bourbon lover in your life a single barrel. Yep. yep. For sure. Yep. Okay. Well, what I've got picked out tonight is Shocker of All Shockers, an old Forester product. Mm -hmm. uh, I am still a little bit of a homer, but this is the uh, single barrel barrel strength pick from Top Hat Liquors. That's a spot over in St. Matthews off Lexington Road. If you're in the Louisville area, this one in particular is a sixth floor pick from Warehouse K. Uh, Warehouse K, if you're not familiar, is the only old Forester uh, warehouse that is not heat cycled. So it's a little bit different um, if you're familiar with the heat cycling process that Old Forester and uh, Woodford Reserve use. It's basically a way to add oak influence in a more expedited way by heating and cooling the warehouse uh, with steam. So this one is not heat cycled, meaning the only flavor profiles you're going to get on it are natural, uh, so mm -hmm. to speak. So this one in particular is a little over four and a half years old. It is 64.5% ABV, 
uh, clocking at 129 proof. So on the nose, this one has quite a bit of a, a pecan and a, a nutty note on the mm -hmm. front end, um, almost like a nut butter kind of thing. It's definitely got sugar on there. Um, and then on the palate, got just a little bit of heat um, initially, probably due to the proof. A lot of honey and honeysuckle mm. that kind of skews floral uh, initially. But then on the back end, you get some of the sweeter confectionery notes, the brown sugar, um, you know, the caramel, but not necessarily caramel like the toffees or, or the candies, but like what you get in the filling of a pecan pie. So it's got just a little bit of dark, a little bit of light, a little bit of floral, a lot of confectionery. Um, this mm. one's pretty off profile for Old Forester. You don't yeah. get the tree fruit. Um, you don't get kind of the medicinal cherry at all. This mm -hmm. one skews a little bit more tropical and a little bit more confectionery. Um, and I really enjoy it. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had this in my possession three or four days now. Um, and I've got about a quarter of it down. So if that tells you anything. I'm enjoying it. Well, good. Good. <laughs> um, I'd, yeah, that sounds very interesting. When you started talking about it initially, uh, uh, about what you're getting on the nose, it sounded more like a Jim Beam product than an Old Forester product, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting. Um, yeah. Old Forster is doing a lot with their single barrel program. Um, a lot of what they do is through their uh, website. Mm -hmm. And those are things that, you know, <laughs> hey, it went live at 9 o'clock and at 9.01 we're sold out. I, I don't know how that happens, but yeah, it does. Um, but yeah, they're tough to come by. And uh so, um, I mean, I, yeah, I'd be interested in trying that sometime if we get a chance. So, absolutely, I can get a sample bottle to you this week. Uh, I'm sure. Well, we've got a bourbon fellowship coming up here in a couple of weeks too. So, sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. So, you know, I'd mentioned we'd mentioned earlier uh, David Levine and uh, whiskey in my wedding ring. Uh, David has done a uh, private barrel a private release of from barrel spirits uh, a barrel rye you can see mm. the label there he's even got a little uh sticker thing on the back good so podcaster podcaster yak attack and i'll explain that in a minute but this is um indiana and canadian rye aged between five and 14 years blended put in a barrel a and the barrel is an uh ex armagnac cask so on the on the nose of this you you definitely you hand this to me i'm like okay i, I get the mgp rye out of it mm -hmm. um, it just has those those common uh minty citrusy notes on the palate some of that's still there, but that Armagnac cask influence brings some dark fruit out of it and a little funkiness, which if you've had much Armagnac, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know a better way to describe it other than being funky. Um, but yeah, that's very good. Uh, and... David's done a few different um, barrel picks. So if you're interested in checking this one out, you can go to his website, uh, whiskeyinmywedding.com. And I believe there's even a banner ad that'll pop up that'll take you to uh, the site where you can where you can buy this. Uh, let's see if I can find it. It is 120 proof, and it is... Ninety nine fifty, which for a barrel product is is not all that bad. Not they bad in the middle of their price range. Yeah, yeah, and they do. You know, there there are a lot of people that are sourcers, NDPs, non distilling producers. Um, what barrel does, I think, is is very unique, and they do do a really good job with it. That I didn't necessarily give them enough credit for initially. And that's the way they do their blends. Uh, blending is not easy. Um, and they 
pull together some really nice stuff. So, and this is no exception. So check this out. Uh, you'll be glad you did. Again, if you're looking for a Christmas present, that'd be a good one too. So, all right. Um, let's talk about one hit wonders a little bit. And yes. we each put together a list of five. Mm-hmm. And then we've got a a list from Rolling Stone magazine, which we, which I like to, which I'm just going to keep going back to for lists because there are some things on their list that are just so, so stupid. Uh, but we'll see how this list rates uh, with some of the others that we've talked about. So Drew, you've got a list of five, so go ahead and run down your five in, in any order you'd like. Absolutely. Yeah. In no particular order in terms of favorites, just five that I thought were relevant to the conversation so first one was uh, a song by the band aha take on uh-huh. me yes uh it's a great song we all love take on me it's probably been covered a thousand times and a thousand more times uh poorly in karaoke bars across yes. our great country uh nobody should sing that song um, no. it's 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 insane but um other than that song i don't know that i've heard a single other song by that band ever um <laughs> I've seen the black and white music video and yes, it's a great, uh, a great video. Thing. Just very cool. Very fun. But I uh, think that was about all that they contributed is in terms of charting records. Well, they're from right. Norway. They're, they're a band from Norway and um, apparently are still active. I don't oh. know what they're active doing, but they're still active. Um, okay. But the, um, the, the, the fact that it should never be done, uh, you, you should never sing this in karaoke. I don't care how, cool. how drunk you are because the, the dude's hitting these notes in the stratosphere. Mm-hmm. You may be able to start out singing the song, but it's worse than the Star Spangled Banner as far as exceeding the limits of your vocal range. Yes, <laughs> yes. most definitely. Yeah, the uh, the the worst voice in American Idol and America's Got Talent auditions that I've ever seen typically feature this song. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. That's when you need somebody in your life that will tell you no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do take on me in my audition. No. No, you're not. I love you, but no, you're not. So. Yeah. No, right. So that one was was up there for me. Uh, yeah. Second one I had was Mississippi Queen by the band. I love Nintendo. it. Love it. Um, I first encountered this song, I believe, on Guitar Hero 2. Probably uh, I don't so. think I had heard it prior to that. Uh, this was a little bit after, or a little before my time, rather, uh, in terms of when it would have been on the radio. It's a fun tune. Uh, got that great riff, that da na 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 over and over yep. again. Super yep. fun. It's a blues tune as far as the chord structure. Yep. Um, but not much else coming out of the band mountain as far as I'm concerned. Great song though. Anytime it comes yeah. on the radio, I'm turning it up. Uh, anytime it comes on shuffle on a Spotify playlist, I'm turning it up. Yep, fun one. Great cowbell song too. Yes, yes. Yeah, you need to know. You if you need a playlist of great cowbell songs, I've got one for you. So just let me. Oh know. yeah, please yeah. send that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More useless information you, no one needs. All right, uh, what else you have? I love that one. Uh, Yep. Number three for my list was Sex and Candy, My Marcy yeah. Playground. Um, yeah. We've all heard that one, that sultry ballad about, I think, drugs and hookers. Yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, uh, it's a good tune. It's been done. Uh, unfortunately, it was covered by Maroon 5, um, which we will not speak of necessarily. <laughs> but uh, it's a fun one. So uh, yeah. this one I typically have heard. I, I don't think I've ever heard it on the radio. I've heard it a lot as a walk-up song for like the seventh worst batter on a double-A <laughs> baseball team. Uh, I think that's where this song lives. It's it's the walk-out song for the, the worst player on a, a minor league ball team. <laughs> awesome. That's very good. So, um, and what else? What's next? Uh, next to you, uh, we've got Heaven by the Los Lonely Boys. Yes. Um, so I know you're not on TikTok, but the Los no. Lonely Boys are making a little bit of a comeback on TikTok these Ooh. days. So I don't want to count them out as far as that being their only hit. Uh, but some really fun little guitar parts in that one. 
some cool harmonies, uh, really cool use of drums. So they took out a, the kick drum on that one and they put in a cajon. Um, mm -hmm. If you're familiar with drums, that's a, right. a wooden box drum right. that has a snare in it. So you've got a snare and a bass in one part. And then you also have the snare drum and the floor toms and cymbals yeah. and everything else. So pretty cool little tune. Um, got a little bit of a mariachi influence, some good horn parts in that. Yeah. Uh, so, but they also kind of disappeared until they showed up on TikTok about a month and a half ago. So <laughs> I don't know what they've been doing since then. Uh, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, when, when I first saw it, I thought, uh, Los Lobos, that's how I want hit wonder but it's not lost lobos it's lost lonely boys yes. um yeah okay so right. what is the the fifth one on your list yeah last one on my main list is a song a thousand miles by vanessa carlton yeah so if you're a terry cruz fan and a fan of the movie white chicks you've seen this a, <laughs> da, 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 that one so yeah. um i don't think she's done anything else since then um but uh Do you that have one's to? A, a, I mean, I think you put out a, a masterpiece in some ways. Yeah. I mean, th okay. But, think about it. Okay, I'm sorry. Finish your thought on on this, and then I've got a question. I don't. I don't have much else on that. That okay. was just. That was a, another one that it kind of swept the nation for a moment and yeah. then disappeared. So. So. If you are, the band Mountain, mm -hmm. and you got the song Mississippi Queen. How much? How much are you pulling down in in royalties? Because this song shows up in movies all over the place, all all right? The yeah. All right. Let, let, hang on. Uh, let me see if I can find. I should have thought about this before, but um, I want to see if I can find some sort of reference list of uh, where all this has been used. Um, Uh, it, it like had to be in a Tarantino film or something, right? I would. You Who would loves think those so. Films? Uh, I don't know. It, it it doesn't it doesn't say on uh, uh, Wikipedia, but sometimes it'll have that stuff out there, and it just goes on and on. But I promise you, if you if you watch movies, TV shows, probably TV, you know, uh, commercials on TV. This song pops up everywhere, and it's usually some really hot girl walking in slow motion, getting out of a car, some muscle car. You know, the new one. Yeah. yeah, so she's walking down the street, and 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 everything's in slow motion, and you got Mississippi Queen playing in the background. That that's mm -hmm. that's I, I think that's probably been done you know five or six, seven or eight times. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. they've got to be making enough on royalties from that kind of stuff to to you know that they're not bagging groceries somewhere right you would hope so you would hope so so that's my that's my list of five i know we both have probably some honorable mentions we'll get to later but yeah. that's where i started out for this <clears throat> evening's conversation okay no i like that those are those are all very good uh a couple of them were borderline on on my list too but uh, mm -hmm. believe it or not we did not have any carryover from your list right tonight. But Good before job, we get, Les. yeah, before we get to my list, I want to talk a, a little bit more about single barrels, mm. and let's talk about Four Roses single barrels. You know, this is you can see is a pretty well loved bottle. This is the OBSQ for everyone scoring at home, and um, our our common friend Tom, when he was first getting into whiskey, and we were talking about. Four Roses single barrel products, and we're throwing out all these letters. He's like, "What in the world are you guys talking about? This is..." And then I explained it to him. He goes, "You're kidding. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Yes, sir. Well, that's not that complicated. No, it's not. But they make it sound that way. So anyway, this is OBSQ from our friends over at Westport Whiskey and Wine. Don't know if you can see that or not." Uh, this bottle was chosen by Chris Zaborowski himself. Um, and not to just dwell on the specifics of that bottle, but the state of Four Roses single barrels. Mm -hmm. 
Drew, what changes have you seen in that over the past, I don't know, six, seven years? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll take it back to my time working at Westport Whiskey and Wine. Um, we used to get an allocation at the time I was working there of four or five releases a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we could price them between 55 and 65 typically. Um, and there was almost always a single barrel from Four Roses in the lineup uh, there at Westport Whiskey and Wine. Uh, from that time on, oh my goodness, uh, they may get one allocation a year uh, there at that store, uh, which speaks to the state of the industry as a whole mm -hmm. and some of the distribution problems that we've touched on prior. Um, but the Four Roses Single Barrel Program has almost exclusively gone to uh, your major chains, uh, things like Laker Barn and Total Wine, uh, you know, your, your West Coast chains. Um, what's the one up in Chicago? I always forget what they're called. Benny's. Benny's. Yeah. So Benny's gets a lot of them. Uh, but it kind of seems like uh, they're coming fewer and farther between. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. The scarcity, the price has also jumped probably about 40 bucks. Yes. Um, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find one for sub 110 if a single barrel barrel proof. I've, right I've, see, I've seen prices ranging anywhere from $95 to 125 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 95 would be a blessing yeah. on that. So um, that's kind of what I've seen. The other thing that I've noticed is uh, the lack of K and Q mash bills. Um, got a lot of B, uh, excuse me, got a lot of V, got a lot of F. I have not seen mm -hmm. uh, some of the Q's and some of the K's. Yeah. There for a while, while, the O's disappeared. Mm -hmm. And those have made a little bit of a comeback. Um, again, not to get do go too far down the, the rabbit trail on this. Go but, for it. You know, that... Uh, I I doubt that uh, I could put uh, a one of the mash bill in front of anybody, and that they could guess the the what that mash bill was based upon drinking it. Okay, it it's they're not that they are different, but they're not so dissimilar that most people could could differentiate between them would you agree mm -hmm. with that yeah absolutely unless you are very very familiar you know right. somebody like travis hill yes um, you know some of our four roses <clears throat> geeks you're not yeah. the, even just a bourbon fan somebody that's really in it it's not going to be able to yeah right 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 uh and I, i've been a fan of, of four roses for a long time uh i collected the the 10 different mash bills the hard way. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, you and a couple of our friends got me the, the one last uh, mash bill that I was missing. You got me a bottle of that. Um, I think it was for a, a birthday or something, which was, it was very your nice. birthday in like 2019, 2018, yeah, something like, something that. like yeah. that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but the, the whiskey itself, I think is fantastic. Now there was a, a while there where, it seemed like the number of single barrels that were being released was decreasing and the age on those that they were releasing was getting younger. I mean, you mm -hmm. were seeing some stuff in the eight to nine year range, whereas before you would see stuff more in the 10 or 11 year range, mm -hmm. which that doesn't make it bad. It just means, you know, it's, it's, it's just younger. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that Four Roses, that I don't think they did a, a, a they did a disservice to the people that made them. Yes, and what I mean by that are the stores like a Westport Whiskey and Wine, when nobody else was really clamoring for their product, they were taking the single barrels and they were buying them and they were selling them. Uh, a place like Bourbon's Bistro, our friend Jason Bronner, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know he uh, 
he had he got the second single but he did the second single barrel pick that they ever did there i think mm-hmm. and now he can't get a pick yep whiskey bar of the world winner and he can't get a four roses barrel pick something's wrong at four roses yep so let's let's <clears throat> talk about that so yep. you know jim rutledge um, yes friend of the show and friend of us just he basically saved the company from mm-hmm. destruction you know bringing back the distillation capacity and things like that and then you have who by all accounts is a great guy uh brent elliott take yeah. over as master distiller yeah. put out some great products i think starting in what was his first release was that 2015 mm-hmm. or 2016 that was the first I'm thinking it was uh, 16, but I'm not positive. Okay. I think you're right. It was somewhere around the mid 2010s. Um, but he's been at the helm for quite a while. And then you have this influence of the Kieran Brewing Company that owns Four Roses, uh, <laughs> has for quite some time. And then you have the problem of distribution. You know, if you were just to to throw a dart out there and say, hey, I think this is where the breakdown is. What what do you think the reason is why all these big longtime fans of four roses can't get our hands on it anymore or the stores that we you know shop at can't get their hands on yeah. it anymore well i think part of it is it's a part of it is a su- supply and demand thing mm-hmm. uh, and there are more people wanting it uh, they did not prepare for that kind of bourbon boom sure. uh so their levels, their production levels were not to the, not to the point that they needed to be in order to have the supply on hand, which I think mm-hmm. this affected a lot of different places. Um, but I think they were a little slower than some of the others to respond to that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And it, it just became, uh, you know, where, where do the dollars come from? Sure. Yep. And, you know, like the the distribution of the allocated Buffalo Trace products is based upon how much Fireball you sell. Right. And well, Wheatley Vodka. Don't forget yes, that. Yes, yeah. Fireball and Wheatley Vodka. So if you sell a lot of that crap, um, then you're going to get a, a greater selection of uh, uh, allocated product, whether sure. that be the Pappy lineup, the Well lineup, uh, Eagle Rare, whatever the case Taylor may be. Taylor Williams. Yeah. 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 Now, what do you think about <laughs> the influx of small batch and small batch select and yeah. its availability? Because I've noticed those two products going up. I can find those anywhere. Yep. yep. I find I them on agree. travels. I, I find them at any store in Louisville. I find them when I'm in Tennessee, West Virginia. Right. Ohio, yep. those are everywhere. Do you think those two line <laughs> extensions play any role in the lack of availability as far as single barrels go? I don't know that th- that, that does. I know that they tie, or I've been told that they tie uh, allocation of single barrels to sales of what we all knew as yellow label. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're selling a whole lot of that baseline product. You're going to get more opportunity to pick a single barrel, which that benefits the the states that don't have small batch select yet. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so if you're out in, you know, Salt Lake City, for example, I don't know if they've got it in utah or not but it lets you for an example you know it's a decent sized city uh do they sell a lot of uh anything else in, in the four roses line other than yellow label i don't i don't know mm-hmm. but i would think if they sell anything of, of theirs it would be that so theoretically they could be getting a disproportionate share of uh, uh private uh single barrel picks um I, the I will say I, I like the single barrel uh, product, and I really like the single barrel select product. Uh, I appreciated the fact that they limited the distribution initially, and they didn't um, they didn't ignore uh, Kentucky 
in that, their home state, which Heaven Hill did with their mm-hmm. release of their re-release of the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. Um, so you had the you had the uh, small batch select available in Kentucky, and they limited the other states uh, initially until they knew they had enough product that it could be on the shelf, and then they expanded the the distribution. <clears throat> so I could see how that that could possibly be eating into the the single barrel uh, availability. Um, but I, I don't like the fact that they seem to have forgotten who brought them to the dance Mm -hmm. and who helped make them successful. Um, now that everybody wants what they've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, as far as what's in their bottles, I, I think it's as, high quality is, is any of the big bourbon brands. And that's Agreed. quite a testament to Jim Rutledge because when he took that mess over, they were getting ready to just shut the whole thing down because it all sucked. Absolutely. Yeah. Hats off to him. Um, in all regards. Yeah. yeah. But okay. this is good. Mm. <laughs> Very good. Um, and uh, well, let's before we get off four rows for a second, they do the annual limited edition, right? Yep. And you know, used to you could they would have a release at the distillery, you could go down there, you could line up, you you know, you'd have to be getting there really, really late to not be able to get a bottle. Sure. And uh, then COVID hit and they stopped doing that and they never started again. Um, they do everything by, uh, you know, sign up online on a lot- lottery, online lottery, um, which, you know, people can have 50 different email addresses and that's how they get these things. And I, I don't mind going down and spending a, a few hours on a Saturday morning standing in line to pick up a bottle, but I don't want to have to sit around making up 50 different email addresses and sending those in to, to try to win that lottery. Um, so I don't really like the way that stuff's done anymore. Uh, therefore I've not had a limited edition in, in, a, in several years. Yep. So, but they're always very good. Uh, very, uh, unique blends of their different mash bills. So, mm. and, and I think Brent's done a really good job moving that forward. So, absolutely, yeah. And they're all worth trying. To your point, you know, if you can get a, a spot at Westport Whiskey and Wine or Neat uh, here in Louisville or Bourbon's Bistro, and you get a chance to try either a single barrel or a limited edition small mm. batch, those are well worth trying. Yep. But it is frustrating. Uh, as a fan that used to be able to access that. I think you and I and our friend Mark spent more than a few nights on sidewalks <laughs> yeah. uh, trying to get those each year. And now there's just no chance. So. Yeah. Yeah. Brown with a Y. There's a story there. Right. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> a good story. Yeah, there's a, that's a story for a different day. Um, <laughs> right now, let, let's switch back over and talk about one hit wonders. And I've got yes. my list. I want to hear it. Okay. First is Tainted Love by Soft Cell. All right. Yeah. Great song. And it's a boom. That's a boom. fun one. Yeah. Tainted Love. Um, Was uh, there a Boy George cover of that at some point? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I know uh, there was an Alvin and the Chipmunks cover that was very cool. <laughs> but uh, that was something I watched with Kate's nieces a while back. And it was like, oh, well, it's not doing it justice. But. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so Tainted Love covers. Here's a good one for you. Okay. Marilyn Manson. Okay. Did not know that. Uh, straight No Chaser, so that would be an acapella version of it. That's the acapella guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't see uh, Boy George. but No I, Boy George, okay. I do see uh, Marilyn Manson, so that would be okay. something. That guy uh, is... Creepy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> D- 
dude, dude needs Jesus. More ways than one. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but second on my list is 8675309. Okay. By Tommy Two Tone. Um I, it's just a great, great song. You know, it, it, you're if you're out at uh a restaurant or something and they're calling out order numbers ticket numbers and somebody says eight six seven if you don't shout five three oh nine there's something wrong with you mm-hmm. uh, and uh, this is by uh, tommy two-tone and i saw where tommy two-tone was a few years ago where he was playing at some county fair I'm like <laughs> what else is he gonna play i yeah. mean Here's a Come reggae version. near you. Yeah. Here's a reggae version of eight six seven five three zero nine, and here's an acapella version. And you know, um, I I don't know that he has any other. They have any other songs? So, but that that so, I love that one. Uh, we were at um, uh, some uh, uh, cake supply store with Cindy one time, and they had these all you know the the birthday candles that are in the shape of numbers. Mm-hmm. So of course I rearrange the numbers where it's eight six seven five three oh nine. As you should. She's, she's like, "What are you doing?" I, just give me a minute. <laughs> I'm working here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she loves it. <laughs> yes. Uh, the next one is by this band right over here uh, above my shoulder, uh, The Knack and My Sharona. Oh, that's a good one. That's a great song. I love that song. Um. Yeah, that, did not uh, know who did that until this day. That, well, now you know. You learned okay. it. You were you were this day old when you found that out. <laughs> Do you remember the the TV show? I think it was FX, the uh, Monk with Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. The detective with the OCD. There's yeah. a character on there named Sharona, and yeah. they did just little characters throughout the show singing the song or the yeah. hook from the song. That was my only experience with that yeah. prior to uh, to this show. So that's yeah. fun like it yeah it's a great song and uh they don't really i mean there are a couple other songs on that on the album that that uh, that are decent uh but nothing that ever was a a big hit so uh check out the knack i think that came out in 79 uh something like that uh yeah 79 um then uh men without hats safety dance yes Absolutely. Yep. It's a great song. Uh, I remember they're dancing around some medieval village with with uh, chickens and ducks and stuff running about. And they're dancing around. And I think there are some, some midgets involved. Um, <clears throat> and then and lastly is Brandy by Looking Glass. Oh, yeah. Banger. You, you can't talk about brandy you know in terms of the the spirit brandy and without somebody saying she's a fine girl okay Mm -hmm. yes 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 she is yes um (laughs) you got a little uh love recently in the guardians of the galaxy movie yes right yes yeah right yeah i went back um and uh if i'm not mistaken there's a couple of our favorite bands around town that cover that in their set I've heard that more than once out of Kevin Niehoff. I've heard it more than once out of Top Show. So, oh wow, so that's a good one. Uh, that's a, it, that's a good tune. It is a good tune, and uh, you know, you you got, you everybody knows the song. Nobody knows who sings it, right? Which is kind of true with most all one hundred wonders. wonders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Mm. Well, I'm. I, I think you put together a pretty good list here, man. Yep. Uh, I like that there was no overlap as well because we both yeah. went into it kind of blind. I am interested in this Rolling Stone list, and I'm sure it's going to piss us both off. Are you ready to get into that? All or right, you have any more to no, add? No, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Um, number ten is "Turning Japanese" by The Vapors. No idea what that song is. Okay. Well, nope. It, if out of morbid curiosity you want to listen to it you can okay. um but but it is not it is not great um okay. uh then there's 96 tears by question mark and the mysterians 
Never heard of it. And not, yeah. Okay. Eight. I, I got to ask is, is their list based on billboard numbers? No, it's just based on some, I don't know if it's one writer or an editorial board or. So this is gotcha. top 10 from Rolling Stone magazine. So to be clear, there's no objectivity in this whatsoever. No. In terms of, oh, no. these are the greatest one hit wonders. Right, right. Not a certain not, time period. Okay. It, it is not weeks at number one or record sales or anything like that that, I, that, I, that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, number, number eight is Tub Thumping by Chumba Wumba. Okay. <laughs> Which is basically a song about getting drunk before you go get drunk or something right sure um, uh, hard to argue that there was any other hit by chumbo wumba so, yes okay yeah uh this next one i was actually talking about this band with alan bishop the other day uh the song is no rain by blind melon oh okay yeah it's a good a song out of left field but yeah yeah i can see good, that good song and and you know i don't if you heart, if you press me to come up with more uh, blind melon hits, I don't know that I could, but I've listened through some of their albums over the years and always thought, yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, No Rain by Blind Melon is number seven. Uh, coming in at number six is one of mine, uh, My Sharona by the Knack. Yeah. And then number five is another one of mine, Tainted Love by Soft Cell. Mm hmm. Okay, I'll be interested in, to see if you know this one or not. Okay. And number four is In a Big Country by Big Country. A Big Country, yes. 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 The, the that, Scottish band, yes. That was an honorable mention uh, on my <laughs> list. I don't know if I texted that to you, but so I, I outsourced the homework for this episode. Uh, I've got two group chats that I go to for music. One's with my dad yeah. my brothers. The other's with our band, uh, yeah. Lorenzo, Evan, and Mark. And uh, Lorenzo's first answer was, you know, in a big country. So definitely heard it. Uh, it's usually in a soundtrack in a dive bar. Uh, so not something I, I choose to listen to, but I've definitely heard that one. I really like the song. I think the guitar part is is terrific. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I, I like I like big country. I actually I, back in 1983 when this came out, I bought the cassette. All right. All right. So somewhere in in some box somewhere is uh, the uh, Big Country album. I like it. So there you go. Uh, number three. Okay, we talked about uh, the commercial uh, appeal uh, of Mississippi Queen. This mm -hmm. one could possibly top that one, and that is "Spirit in the Sky" by Norman Greenbaum. Yeah. That's okay. a great one hit wonder. Good one. Yeah. Uh, I, I like think it. it's been in a Judd Apatow film. I'm sure we've seen it in a car commercial at some point. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's been in a lot of movies and stuff. Uh, I think it was in Armageddon. Uh, but oh, The Bruce Willis? Yeah. The, 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 it may have been the one non Aerosmith song in the movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, I don't want to know what the back end deal on that one was. But yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a good uh, tune. Um, it is. I don't. I don't hate that one. Yeah. Um, the next is "Come On Eileen." Okay. Dexy's Midnight Runners. Come on, Eileen. Yeah. 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 Heard the song. I've never heard that band before. Okay. Dexy's Midnight right. Runners. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, then last number one is one of yours. Take on me by Aha. Mm -hmm. So. Um, thoughts on the Rolling Stone list? I mean, dude, as I was always with Rolling Stone, who knows how yeah. they came up with it? It's fine. Uh, and I'm not as up as far as decades of music. So there may be some more perspective there than what I'm privy to. There's a few on those that I, I'm not mad at. Um, I think the Spirit in the Sky is a good one. Uh, and come on, Eileen is one that neither of us thought of that we've definitely heard. Yep. So hard to argue with those. The rest of it, I'm kind of ambivalent towards. What about you? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think they they probably grade out at a a B B plus with it. Uh, there are a few that I would think I, I wouldn't. I don't know why you'd put that on there, but um, 
anyway, you had a, a kind of an honor, honorable mention list too. Do you want to sure. talk about those? Any of those we missed that you want to make sure we talk about? Uh, uh, I mean, nothing crazy. Um, I'll just run through them real quick to see if yeah. our listeners have any thoughts on the comments. But Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Um, hard to think that he did anything else. Uh, Mickey by Tony Basil. Yes. Uh, nothing compares to you. I know Sinead O'Connor had other hits, but it's a Prince tune. And then the Chris Stapleton version is pretty incredible. So just to tie in this episode and our last yes. one, yep. uh, I thought that one should be included. Uh, the Middle by Jimmy Eat World is yeah. hard to argue. So if you're not in the emo pop punk world, yep. you know The Middle. If you right. are in that, you know you've got uh, Hear You Me, uh, you've got Angels, you've got a few other songs that are in that, but... As far as popular music is concerned, everybody I think knows the middle. Um, Fooled Around and Fell in Love. Yep. Uh, by uh, Elvin Bishop. Yeah. And then Easy Lover uh, was the, the last one on my list. Yeah. That one was sent to me by my dad. Okay. Uh, he suggested that. So I don't know if that <laughs> technically counts because it's kind of a super group. Um, they had hits otherwise, but that well, was the one together. It was Philip Bailey who was with earth wind and fire and phil collins who was producing philip bailey's solo album right because uh, in the mid 80s you were contractually obligated if you produce if you wanted to make an album phil collins had to produce it exactly uh, right right so but, uh, I, no i love that song it's a great song that that one could be argued because earth wind and fire obviously have hits and phil collins had hits and genesis had hits so I don't know if that one technically counts as a one hit wonder, but as far as collaborative uh efforts go. Yeah. So no, I I I I like that song a lot. I saw it on some other one hit wonder list and I thought, I don't know that I'd put that on there, but it's always fun to talk about that song because it's a great song. For sure. Uh, Do you have any uh, honorable mentions or ones that you thought should be considered? Uh no, nothing really worth with diving into um i think we've got a pretty good list between what you've got and the the few that that rolling stone added to it um so if you had to pick one song and say this is the greatest one hit wonder song of all time ignoring uh, uh rolling stones rankings this might be the one time i'm ever going to disagree or, excuse me i'm going to agree with rolling stone but take on me might be my favorite I don't know about best, yep. but favorite. Anytime that song comes on, I'm cranking it up. Um, yeah. yeah, Sex and Candy would be the other one that I'm always <laughs> going to listen to, unless it's at a bad karaoke bar or done by Maroon 5. In that case, I'm, <laughs> I'm gone as quick as possible. Yeah. Uh, I, think that's, uh, I think that's tough to say, okay, this is the one. Um, I think my Sharona kind of fits the whole, this was a really big, big song and mm -hmm. they had really nothing else. Um, okay. Remember this? Okay. You asked, you, you asked me before heading the others. There was one that, that we, nobody talked about. Uh, the future's so bright. I've got to wear shades by Tim Buck three. Do you know that one? not heard that one i bet but you have heard we're it we're checking it out okay I bet, I bet you have heard it you just didn't realize what it was but when that song came out it was like their debut album their debut single everybody's like oh wow this they're great this is they write songs like bob dylan and this is and and then they went away as quickly as they showed up okay um, yeah i Tim will Tim check that three out. Tim buck three where would i have heard that was it a Marshall placement was it in movies? I'm sure it's been dad's in movies truck and stuff. Something okay, possibly your dad's truck, uh, <laughs> but definitely in some movies and stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll check it out and we can DM offline yeah. about it. But there are a lot of these that you know, I this this comes on, you know, if I'm just doing some sort of random and random playlist or whatever, and it, that song comes on, I'm I'm not skipping it, I'm digging right in with Mississippi Queen or uh tainted love or uh safety dance maybe not safety mm -hmm. dance i mean listen to you know a verse or two of safety dance and ah, okay i've had enough got uh, it and yeah then move on so 
Good stuff. Yeah, it's fun, 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 fun. Um, so, if you have any one-hit wonders that you think that we've missed, or that you think, oh, that's not a one-hit wonder because uh, the knack had these other hits, uh, tell us. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, one last question on single barrels. I, I know you've bought some whiskey over your your time. Uh, maybe a couple of bottles here or there. Um, is there a single barrel that you've had that you thought, I wish I could go back and have that, have that back or have bought that second bottle when I had the chance? Yeah, um, definitely. There's a few probably, uh, in my collection over the years, um, You've heard my tragic story about losing my collection. I'll spare the rest yes. of our listeners that. But um, there was an Elijah Craig, and it was the A one eighteen version. It was the the January uh, two thousand eighteen edition. That was the absolute perfect uh barrel proof elijah craig in my estimation mm -hmm. uh, i think we drank some of that together if i'm I, not mistaken I would not be surprised <laughs> um but it was everything that i love about elijah craig just dialed up to 11 and the proof didn't kill it at all i yeah. didn't need to add any water anything like that um it paired well with meat it paired well with cigar it was perfect to drink neat. It was perfect in just every every aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I had no gripes about that one. So that would be one uh, that I would say. Uh, I'm sure there's single barrels of Old Forester that I tasted during my career there that were great. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, uh, a single barrel that we did at Westport Whiskey and Wine from Limestone Branch for their 100% malted rye. Yep. <laughs> I was pretty pretty sad that that one was gone. But that Elijah Craig uh, A one hundred and eighteen. That I would say that was probably the one standout yeah. for me that I would love to have back. What about you? Yeah, I may still have a bottle of that um, malted rye from Limestone Branch. So okay, we'll see. Um, okay, uh, and and we talk a lot about Westport Whiskey and Wine on here because it's a sh it's a store that is local to us. It means a lot to us. It's where I met Drew. Mm -hmm. um there are st hopefully stores in that same vein where you live okay um they're privately owned they're they're not the big box guys not i mean they they big box big box guys have their place but support the the small smaller local stores um they had a uh, Russell's Reserve picked, mm. and when they actually went to bottle it, the proof had dropped below one ten. So they had to release it as uh, Kentucky Spirit. Kentucky Spirit. Yep, I remember that. And so they proofed that down to one hundred one, and that that was a very special uh wild turkey kentucky spirit and that would be one that yeah if i had had a chance to grab one back i think that just because there's a there's a little bit of legend to it and uh a little story behind it so that that would be one that that i would love to get back absolutely yeah, yeah. that was I'm a sure, good one i'm sure there are others uh but that was the first one that came to mind so but that's the beauty of single barrels too <laughs> It's yeah. it's here. You get to enjoy something that's incredibly unique, and then it's gone. You got to yep. experience kind of a moment in history. Yep. That's that's a one of the draws to that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, let us know if there's single barrels that that you may have tried that uh, you think are uh, the absolute greatest thing. So, uh, so uh, Drew, what do we have coming up next? Yeah. Um, so I'm honestly not sure what our next show is. I, I think we talked about it at one point, but yeah. what is the next show? Kevin? <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to be rejoined by our friend, Nancy Fraley. That's right. Uh, that is, uh, scheduled to be basically the shows that will close out, uh, 2023 for us. 
and may be able to, we may be talking not just uh, with Nancy about some of the things that she's doing. Uh, we may also talk about best bass players of all time with Nancy. And I'm going to try to get a couple of uh, bass players from some bands that we know to, to join us in that part of the conversation. So uh, be on the lookout for those shows. Nancy's always a great guest and she's yeah. very sweet, very good to us. And um, she actually named, you know, she, she does the blend for Joseph Magnus, um, uh, so cigar blend batches she blends all those batches and when she was in the process of doing this i don't know a month or two ago she reached out to me and she said would you mind if i named one of the one of the cigar blend, blend batches uh after bourbon turntable <laughs> wait is this some sort of joke who put you up to this um uh, and of course yes please um and then she did this really nice write-up where she talks about our show and and what what drew and i are doing here and uh, mm -hmm. so now it's just a matter of finding batch 187 of joseph magnus cigar blend if you find it at your local liquor store buy it and i'll procure it from you if you'll allow me um uh, so <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a great honor, uh, from Nancy and she's just a wonderful person. And so looking forward to having her back on the show. Cause it's always a lot of fun. Uh, she's a Absolutely. great talent, great talent, great lady and, and, and loves music, uh, uh, as much or more than we do. So, Definitely. uh, until next time, uh, on behalf of Drew and myself, cheers, love and free bird. Good night.